Hey everybody, it is me. It's your old buddy, Steve Simonson, and here I am doing it yet again. Uh, and we're on podcast episode number 191, everybody. And uh, what does that mean? That means you can go to awesomers.com slash 191 for today's show notes, details, and we might even throw in a link or two. It just depends on how many drinks the tech team has had when they put the page together. Uh, but most often you'll find something of value there, so don't hesitate to get that done. Uh, for those listening and who have listened for some time and not yet left a review, I just want you to know the currency I get paid in is reviews. So go leave a review. That's how uh, we spread the word, and it gives Steve a little high for the day, and then I get back to work. So if you, uh, if you like what you hear, go ahead and leave a five-star review. If you don't like what you hear, leave a five-star review anyway. That's my policy on reviews. And, uh, and by the way, I'm sure it's consistent with the, the Apple and the Amazon policy of soliciting reviews. Uh, not that I care. So listen, I'm going to introduce today my special guest, uh, John Tilly. He's with Zonguru. Say hello, John. What's up, Steve? Hey, guys. Uh, well, 191 is my lucky number. No, that is your lucky number. And by the way, nobody else on the planet has that number except you. You are the only episode 191. So that's uh, quite exclusive. Uh, John, why don't you give us a little bit about your background uh, and tell us kind of where you came from uh, for those who don't know you. Yeah. Um, so, so that's my accent, which is I'm, I'm originally from South Africa, Johannesburg. Uh, I was born and raised there, went to college there. Um, and, uh, you know, kind of started my, my life's journey from, from college. Uh, you know, I, I actually took a gap year after, after finishing my studies and traveled to the States for a year. Um, and then, uh, and then actually after that, uh, I went, to, I think I ended up going to about 39 States. So I really oh. traveled the, the, a just lot in of the one States. year. That's pretty yeah. good. Pretty yeah, uh, yeah, aggressive. Good. I like good. that. Yeah. 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 Montana was one of my favorite spots. I did a ski season there as well. Um, and, uh, you know, came back and, Worked a bit in South Africa. I, I, my, my main uh, job that I had was in advertising. So I became an advertising exec um, and had a career in that for 12 or 13 years, uh, kind of moving from advertising more into uh, e-commerce and, and, and handling the advertising side of that. So that was my, my career path in, in, in the normal sense. But I, I lived in South Africa for a bit, moved to London, had a few years in London, and then uh, moved back to the States. And I'm now based in Los Angeles since 2006 so you know that's a good 14 15 years somewhere around there that i've been in in los angeles so it's yeah stuck. that's a that's a pretty uh, whirlwind uh worldwide journey uh and just for uh, uh those keeping score at home uh you are the second person originating from south africa that i've interviewed today so how about that and oh, one wow. of my partners uh paul harvey is also from south africa so i'm I'm pretty connected. That's, that's what the message is for everyone who's listening. I'm, I'm pretty connected. So, uh, John, tell me, how did the journey go? Once you kind of uh, presumably left the corporate rule, how did you start uh, and co-found Zan Guru? How did that come about? Yeah, um, well, it's, it's interesting to me, I guess. We'll, we'll see if it's interesting to, to you guys. But um, I think I was one of those who was, who was always dreaming of being an entrepreneur, I say entrepreneur weird. I don't know why I said differently, but that's all um, right. Well, and we, we have a uh, auto tune. It'll fix that up for yeah, you. Don't worry you. about a thing. Uh, yeah. I, I always dreamt of being an entrepreneur and um, you know, I just could never pull the trigger on it. I think I was in that, that typical case of you know, being in a really solid corporate gig that was honestly interesting and fascinating. Advertising is, is one of those, those um, careers that, that is pretty enjoyable um, out of, out of all those careers. And, and uh, really learned a lot and enjoyed it. But I always had this dream of having my own business and could never um, fully pull the trigger. Um, and I put that down a little bit to, to sometimes, as we usually do, overanalyzing the, the opportunity. So I'd have a business idea and I'd be like, this is it. And then I'm like, oh, I need a business plan and I need this and I need that. And, you know, that, that, that whole, um, you know, motivation uh, falls away at some point. So, uh you know, it, it got to a point in 2014, uh, I'm, I met my then, uh, well, future business partner, um, Adam Hudson, who's an Australian um, in Los Angeles. We, I took him to a networking kind of men's uh, breakfast um, and we, we became friends then. And we, uh, we started to explore uh, this idea of, of Amazon. Uh, he had a retail, a product that he wanted to put into retail and just you know, at that time, just saw how, how difficult retail 
was to actually get into um and this whole idea of of, of amazon and and uh, we went to vegas i think we attended amazing i don't know what it was called back then but this was 2014 or 2013 uh, we went to uh, attended a, an amazon event and uh the lot the light bulb just went off for me i was just like you know i could very clearly see the pathway from from having this corporate you know sophisticated uh you know heavy uh, career path that I was involved in, but be able to do the side hustle and actually creatively uh, create a product and, and launch that. So that was my, my, the light moment for me where I was like, wow, I can actually do this as a side hustle. I have a very clear objective. Um, and, and I, and I started to proceed with that. So, um, that was back in 2014. Um, there was a number of other things that, that were happening personally at that time. I think, you know, you know, one of the reasons I came over to the States was, um, I, you know, uh, a girlfriend at the time who was, uh, at that time, my wife, who I was going through a divorce with and we were separating and, um, you know, I lost a lot of confidence and, and, and managed to, you know, do a lot of work around getting my self-confidence and self-belief back and, and the leverage that I wanted to actually start my, something that I've always dreamt of doing, which is entrepreneurship. So, um, you know, there, there's, there's stories of moving out and living in a construction site and, uh, you know, uh, you know, having, having no mattress and, and just kind of figuring out life, you know, which I think is an important thing for us all to go through. And, you know, I, I progressed through that and, and I, and I, everything kind of aligned and, and I started with my Amazon business and, and right out of the gate, um, when I launched the product, uh, I was within a couple of weeks, I was doing 50,000 a month with that product. Nice. So, um, you know, that was, uh, that was the moment for me where, where I got to a point of going, Hey, I, you know, packed up my, I've got a photo of myself with, with that kind of, uh, movie scene thing or of a, of a brown box packed with all my, all my stuff. And I said adios to uh, corporate life and, and walked out the door. So that was, that was the start of my journey, which was, which is awesome. Yeah. I, I think there's a lot of awesomers out there who actually can identify with that full journey, right? They've taken a similar journey to yourself. So it is quite interesting. And also those aspiring entrepreneurs who are, are perched on the precipice of that decision where, you know, sometimes you, you just got to jump off the cliff and, and figure out how to fly a plane before you hit the bottom. Um, and, you know, I do want to say that it's not unique to you to kind of hit that mushroom cloud uh, where, where you, it's like, I got these ideas, now I need a business plan. And we, we kind of self, you know, explode this into a mushroom cloud. And, and you know, when you walk in, it's easy enough, oh, I want to start a business. But by the time you're in the middle of that, you can't find which way is up. And, and that's, that's a common thing that people go through. And so, uh, it's the fact is you, you fought your way through it. You started this Amazon business and at that time you were still uh, a normal employee somewhere else. Is that true? Yeah. And I think that's, that's the beauty of, you know, I still absolutely believe this, that, that, that starting an Amazon business is, is one of the best ways right now to creating, um, you know, uh, wealth, uh, up front. you know, you don't need a degree. You don't need you know, connections, you just need the knowledge and, and the understanding of how it works. And, and you literally can create a business that can scale your wealth quite dramatically, quite quickly. Um, and, and what's the beauty of it is that you don't have to jump off a cliff to do it. You know, you can keep your, your current job and you can, as long as you apply discipline and consistency, you, 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 you can get there pretty quickly. Um, and I think that was probably the realization for me and, and the moment for me that really got me to be successful with that Amazon business was understanding that, that we tend to overthink things, especially if we've got, you know, and I'm doing this in, in, in inverted commas, but like an educated background where we understand business plans and all these technical things of what to do. And it's, and it's sometimes it's just a simple approach of, of recognizing when you need to do something that you, in your mind, you put so many obstacles in that way. And if you can actually break down that obstacle and just keep the momentum going, you, you very quickly will have a business within four or five or six months. And so, that was my approach. Whenever I, I had something to do for that week and when I put obstacles in the front, I would tackle how I could remove that obstacle and, and complete what I need to do. And, and I managed to get to, to having that business quite quickly while I obviously had my, my, my current day job. So that That's was, that was a beauty. really smart. It's a great way to kind of leverage the best of both worlds. Uh, over time though, you must have left that job unless you're still working there now. And then you've started Zonguru uh, along that journey as well. So how did you get from, maybe you still sell on Amazon, but from that first Amazon business to Zonguru? Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I did, I left, uh, my corporate gig on the back of the Amazon business, which was doing 50,000 a month at the time. And, and I was, 
fully focused on on building out that Amazon business. Um, but my uh, my business partner Adam Hudson, who you know had had started his Amazon business as well and was very successful with that, um, you know we we had a conversation because it was right at the beginning of where services was becoming a part of of the Amazon world, and you know we we had a vision for for and and particularly Adam had a vision for you know starting an education business which which taught people how to how to approach an Amazon business in the right way. Um, you know, a sustainable way where you create a proper brand and a proper business, which at the time was, was very different to what was being taught out there. It was like, you know, let's get rich quick kind of thing, you know? So, so it was, it was moving away from that into a much more disciplined approach to creating a business. Um, and, and, you know, with my background and, and the technical know-how of the job that I was in, um, you know, I started the, the, the services side, which is the software side of it, which in combination with the education went really well together. So, um, you know, uh, that ultimately became the side hustle to my, my Amazon business, which, um, it's now flipped around again, where, where that's my main, my main gig and, and the Amazon business is still a side hustle, which I still run. Um, we still have that going, but, uh, yeah, that was a, that was a fascinating journey starting the, the, the software business. Cause at the time it was like, no one really knew about software and, and, you know, we, we, we started at the grassroots level and I used to have like meetups in the back of bars in Los Angeles and get a few people on and, you know, Adam was building up the education side and, and, you know, we, within a year, we had a few conferences, mostly based, mostly based in Australia, where, where it built up to three, four, 5,000 people attending. Oh. Um, and, and, uh, you know, we could go there and, and teach people and show them the software and, and take it from there. So, um, yeah, incredibly lucky. I think in, in, in that journey is having the right business partner and, and, and Adam is definitely one who's got a lot of experience and, and, and had a lot of mentorship there for me as well, which is, which is a, a good thing to have for sure. Um, yeah. It's nothing like uh, having somebody you can rely on, a, you know, carry their part of the mission and you carry your part. And uh, that certainly, uh, it, to me, it's very interesting that uh, you were able to put together thousands of people in Australia. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, uh, was it an Amazon specialty or was it uh, outside of Amazon? It was. Yeah, it was. And, and, and that's, again, the beauty of Amazon is you can be anywhere in the world and sell on the biggest marketplace you know, that's available. And, and, and that is Amazon.com. I mean, you, you can sell, obviously, in Amazon Europe or now it's Amazon Australia, Japan, India, you know, wherever. But you don't have to be based in that country to sell it. Um, and that's just this model that we have access to today where you can literally, um, you know, create a product, never meet the suppliers, sell a product, never meet your customers, never touch it. And you don't even have to live in that country. Um, and you can, you can access, you know, 300 million and more people is just insane. Um, and, and that's literally there without, you know, needing, you know, a certificate or a degree or anything else. You just need a little bit of smarts and, and, and some gumption and, and you can make it happen. And, we see it every day. I'm sure you see it as well. You know, there's kids 22, 21, 20, you know, doing 150,000 a month, you know, um, you know, and, and more. So, so uh, it's, it's awesome. It's, no, you make a very good point. I, not only have we seen, you know, uh, people of all ages, both the young and, and maybe the, those uh, not so young yes. are able to kind of tackle this thing. And the, the reality is it still remains, in my opinion, the lowest risk, the lowest kind of capital investment with the highest potential ROI. And that is ultimately the equity side, that the ability to generate wealth comes from this in a, the most unique way possible. And, and the best, you know, it's not free if you're really going to build true wealth, right? This is not a get rich quick. I, I think you plainly said that earlier. This is, you know, work hard and do stuff that is meaningful. And, you know, maybe uh, you can build something. But I do, you know, I've seen the young people, you know, in their early 20s who have exited and, and already captured, you know, taking some of the money off the table, some of that risk off the table. So it is think, truly unique. Yes. Yeah. And, and I think that's exactly the approach. You know, you, you, you do have a lot of, of young people and this is the best kind of entry way to having your own business, but they, they might do retail arbitrage or, or stocks, you know, a private label business, but, but ultimately they're just selling products at the end of the day. And I think you know, if, if the, the best piece of advice I could give to those people is to think about the five-year vision and creating a brand. And most importantly, to your point, creating a, a brand and a business that you could exit on. Because you can sell that first company, um, your, your, your journey to wealth is just expedited massively. Um, and, and, 
you know, uh, especially if you create a brand around it, you've got something you can sell. So, so you've got to approach it in the right way. Um, but you can absolutely get cash flow from any Amazon business straight up front. But if you can create that a, a brand around that and a true business that is repeatable and scalable, you, you can sell that and uh, put some serious cash into your pocket and, and start your next venture, whatever that is. Um, so it's the perfect entryway to um, a, a, an amazing ride ahead for sure for anybody who wants to be in the entrepreneur space. And to your point, um, not just young people, old people, you know, old, uh, sorry, that's a bad word, older people. Um, you know, there is that we're in that age now where people don't have, um, you know, a 401k or, or, or money put aside to, to truly exist on once their corporate career job is, is kind of over. So 65 year olds or 60 year olds, they're looking for um, something that can continue to generate wealth for them. And, and a product based business is just the perfect match for that. And they have absolutely the ability to do it. And they are incredibly successful at it. So it's, it's wonderful to see kind of both sides of, of, of it. And, and, yeah, you know. the limitations are, are kind of non-existent. I've seen a lot of, you know, moms who, you know, after their divorce, uh, maybe they weren't uh, situated with, you know, a set of skills or a, a financial background, but, you know, they come screaming out of that thing and they're strong as ever, uh, stronger than ever, honestly. And uh, this is the point is it's an equal opportunity thing. If people are willing to work hard and put in the time and energy to really learn how to do it. And that's, that's, in my opinion, that still remains incredibly unique to this particular uh, category of, of uh, field, you know, of selling products online, particularly as I like to call it, the Amazon is the cornerstone of the business, right? Yeah. You, you can start there. You can end there if you want. And I, this is the, the, one of the weirdest twists I've, I've bought and sold a number of businesses over the years. Most of the time you have a, a non-competition. All of the time you have a non-competition typically, but it can be very narrow in the Amazon space. It's like, hey, I used to sell, uh, you know, uh, avocado slicers. And uh, they're, they're going to say, you can't sell avocado slicers. But it's like, well, now I'm going to sell outdoor solar lights. They're like, yeah, knock yourself out. That's not our problem. And, and you're back in business, right? And that's with all the knowledge, with a little more capital, with a little more learning, it really is a, an opportunity. So let's, I mean, I, I think we agree that it's a wonderful opportunity. Tell, tell me about, you know, how Zon Guru tries to apply the SaaS model, the software services to help these sellers, because that must be part of your mission, yes? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, fundamentally at the core, and I think, I think I've, I've kind of covered that, is, is, is we truly believe in this, this opportunity with Amazon and, and our mission as a software company is is to is to help sellers scale their business and and create a business through um, you know data visualization and and automation you know so ultimately you know our our goal or objective with with our software tools is to is to get data um, from various sources and to to visualize that in a way um, that anybody using the software can make or help them to make the correct decisions around their Amazon business. And I think that's a really important point because there's many software companies out there who just, you know, throw data at you for the sake of throwing data at you. And, and if you can really put that through a business lens and say, okay, how can we really interpret this data in the right way so you can make the right decisions? That's a really important um, aspect, especially if you're in private label and you're trying to build a brand. Um, and that's what we focus on um, through, through our tools and, and, uh, and the other piece of that from a, from a, a business person's perspective is, is to help to automate processes as much as possible. So you're not stuck in the weeds, you know, trying to manage your business. You're really at that kind of director level where you can, you can look at the vision for your business while things are automated as much as possible. So um, we have about 14 different tools in each area of the Amazon business. We, we truly are an all in one uh, software tool set. And um, yeah, it's, it's a fascinating journey. I think, one, there's a lot of joy that you get and satisfaction out of the stories and the people that, that use your tools or, or, or use your training methods um, and, and are successful. Um, you know, uh, so that's, that's a great part of it. But I think the other part of it, just from, from my perspective, is, is um, software as a service, as a, as a business, is, is true, in my opinion, is, is kind of truly one of the, 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 the meccas of, of really understanding every single aspect of a business. Um, it has everything, you know, from, you know, marketing to product development, to software, to retention, to, you know, customer satisfaction. It, it's every single part of a business kind of wrapped up in one. Um, and, and, and the, 
hugely the, the ability to have a, a global team in, in, a, in the kind of modern era, you know? So um, I get a lot of you know, satisfaction personally out of growing a software business and, and, and bringing in the right team members and all that kind of stuff. And, and, uh, and just, you know, just seeing people do better with their Amazon businesses and grow them over time. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely a, a great journey that, that uh, we're on. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we, another, another thing that we do as well is, is we, a few years back, I, I, I've incentivized our team members who are on Zongu to have an Amazon business. So it's something that we actually incentivize and, and we're open about. It's not like, hey, you work for Zongu, you can't do anything else, you know? That's just purely against everything that, 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 I, that I believe in. And so we have many team members who have their own Amazon business now and that beautiful marriage of, of you know, being able to have them build their own businesses, which are going to help them really truly scale their, their wealth in life, but also apply that knowledge to the tools and the products that we create has just created an, an amazing, um, you know, place that we're in right now. Um, in terms it is of an interesting, uh, an interesting spin to, you know, the people who are um, living with the, the software and creating the software and servicing the software to actually know how it's used is a, uh, a pretty interesting thing because uh, very few people, I think, understand the, the journey of the Amazon sellers the, the way an actual seller does, right? It's, it's visceral. And, and sometimes people from the outside can actually give a better perspective, but when you're in the trenches and one little change can just lighten that load, that's easier to see when you're a seller, it seems to me. Is that your experience? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, at the end of the day, I think you, you, you want people who are working for the company to have a very high sense of curiosity, right? So you, you, if they're going to solve problems, the, the, the more curious they are about why, um, the better the result is going to be. And, and clearly, if they have their own Amazon business, they understand the why because they are the target audience to understand why they're doing things and the purpose of what they're doing. And so that curiosity is naturally brought into the day to day. And so they, they execute and, and they, they create amazing tools um, and amazing Amazon businesses. Let me tell you, you know, developers are just the bees knees at, at oh my God, I just said bees knees. But uh, oh, just, well, what a timely <laughs> reference. Uh, we just teleported from the 1950s, everyone. And uh, it's okay. The good news is we have a time machine. The bad news is some of the nomenclature came with us. Uh, yeah, but yeah, we did see geez. Marty McFly and company. So it's, it's all fine. So, but I'm actually surprised by the, your point. You're saying developers are good at running Amazon businesses. Oh, brilliant. Because, Fascinating. you know, developers are, you know, you, you think of them as, 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 you know, from the outside, you might think of them as these mathematical kind of, uh, you know, um, well, what's, what's the word? Introspective, you know, people who, who develop products, but, but actually there's a, there's a, there's a massive amount of creativity there. Um, and, and, and it's creativity and discipline, right? Developers just by, by, by nature are, are, are creative, they're curious and they have a, a, a great um, knack towards discipline. So when you put those together, that's exactly what you need for an Amazon business. Cause again, to my earlier point, you know, if you can be consistent and take consistent action um, and, and, and kind of follow the play, play by play, you, you can have a great business, not only in launching your products, but actually scaling it afterwards because with Amazon, you know, it does take that consistent um, management to, to really build that business up and stay in stock and, and everything else. So they are brilliant at, at doing that. Um, that's smart. And, and I, 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 I can certainly recognize that now that you've laid it out. And I think there's good lessons for the customers out there listening is, is you do have to, in fact, uh, apply those things, right? There is a level of creativity. There is a level of consistency and a level of data and discipline that you need to bring to the table. Yeah. All of these things need to live together to really reach a, a potential. So let's talk about, uh, you know, as people deal with these Amazon businesses, and I'm sure that this is no surprise to you, there appear to be other software options out there in this world. So how, how do you guys separate or how do you differentiate Zonguru from some of the other folks that are out there uh, proclaiming the all-in-one platform as well? Yeah, um, it's, uh, it's getting harder and harder, let me tell you that. Uh, I, think, sure. I think as, as the, the, the marketplace gets more sophisticated, um, you know, software companies who started off with a specific area of expertise over the years is now branched into an all-in-one. You know, Jungle Scout was just research. They are, are more all-in-one right now. Uh, Helium 10 was just listing, you know, and they, and they moved into more of an all-in-one 
and there's others, you know? And so, so those are our biggest competitors. Um, and I think at, at the end of the day, um, our differentiation point is outside of having a few unique tools to what they have and, and vice versa is that, that aspect of visualizing the data in the right way so you can make the right business decisions for your business. And I think because we have uh, a very business approach to our tools and we have uh, developers and product managers and designers who are actually Amazon sellers, the way that they uh, present the tools makes logical sense for, for an Amazon seller and just, just nails it. So um, we, get a, we get a lot of um, head nodding from expert sellers. They're like, okay, you get this. You know, the way that you're, uh, for example, our, one of, our, one of our, our best tools out there is the one called Keywords on Fire. Um, and, uh, you know, the way that it's, it approaches a, a keyword generation tool um, to help you to optimize your listing, but also to, to identify uh, the opportunities where your competitors aren't ranking uh, is it just nails it, you know? So um, at the end of the day, I think all of these tools get the job done. It's really about um, kind of where you align and, and what you, what you enjoy using. Um, and we get the feedback that, uh, that our UX is, is the best out there. So that's, that's one thing that's, that's that I, I think well visualization is a big, important point. Uh, people often, overlook and and although i haven't seen your your software and so forth specifically i can say that that i make my best decisions based on visual presentations of data right i don't want to see a bunch of spreadsheets of numbers although some people love that i want to see the trend lines i i want to see spark charts that show me what's going up and down uh and how some something is different than it used to be right i like to see variances uh and and when i look at a business a, a p l for example I don't really care what the individual numbers are. I care what the trend is. And by the way, even if profit is growing, I want to know why, right? If obviously if it's shrinking, I also want to know why, but you want to know the why for different reasons at different times. And so every one of these types of things, when a visual thing can call your attention to it, right? Particularly anomalies. And the, I, what I'm reading in, I'm inferring that you are uh, creating tools that, that call your attention to things that are important for the to, to get their attention versus just throwing up a, a bunch of pretty charts. Is that fair to say? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it's, it's based on that premise of, I want to know why, you know, and if you're, if you're an Amazon seller, there's certain things that you want to know why about, because ultimately, you know, you're either investing the next six months into building a product and you have to have the right information in the right way. So you can make the right decision. Otherwise you, you know, where your business is going to be in six months can be very different from, from what you're focusing on now. So there's a responsibility for us to make sure we can help you answer that, that, those questions around why. Um, and then um, in terms of scaling your business after launch, yeah, I mean, a, a typical question would be, why are my sales down? Why are they up? You know, that's a question that needs to be answered by, you, you can't just be looking at your own product. You need to be looking at your, your top competitors to understand what they're doing. So we have tools that will, like for example, Product Pulse, which answers that question, which is what, what is impacting my sales? Is it stuff on my listing with regards to the Amazon algorithm or is it what my competitors are doing? And the majority of the time, it's what the competitors are doing, you know, to a degree. So um, yeah, we, we, we try really hard to answer the questions in the right way so you can keep moving forward. It is a real bitter part of the reality that we live in, everybody, that we are faced with something called competition. It's a it's a real outrage. Uh, the fact is, most often I've found that it's usually not us failing ourselves. It's the competition dialing it up a notch or making some sort of twist or turn. And our lack of either acknowledgement or awareness of what those competitors are doing and how it's impacting the, you know, the market share in our particular category or product type, all of that is relevant, right? And th that's kind of the first place that we look when we see something happening, whether it's on Amazon or you know, on the websites with Google, you know, we want to see, hey, are we still getting the, the bid space we used to get? Are we still getting the number of clicks? You, you just track it from the top of that funnel on down and look for the breakpoints. If conversion and everything's the same, but less stuff's coming in the top, why is that? And, and that why goes back to, well, maybe somebody raised their bids and now I'm not getting ad impressions and on and on and on. There are answers to every question. Am I right, John? Absolutely. The, 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 that's, you're, you're spot on. And I think, um, you know, competition is, is, is a, is a bad thing, but it's obviously a good thing in, 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 
uh, in many as in many respects. And I think the best advice I could give to someone who's who's launching an Amazon business or has launched a product is the best thing to do next is to launch another product. And and the more products you can launch, uh, the the quicker you will scale your wealth. But also importantly, the 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 longer you're going to stay ahead of the competition because um, you know whether it's a new product or whether you're upgrading your product. You, you, you have a runway ahead of your competition. So keep it going and keep, keep your foot on the, on the gas pedal and, and keep moving forward. Um, and, and that's the quickest way is just keep launching more products. Um, yeah. yeah and, 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 you know, if to that point, when people are choosing their product, I would choose a product that, and, and, and a manufacturer that can easily bring you other products. Um, so you can build a brand line very quickly without having to find a new manufacturer every single time you look for a different product. So, so that's an important way to, to scale quickly. Yeah, I definitely can say that, you know, having the, the foresight to say, you know, what can I launch next? And what does this mean to my customer? Ideally, they, the, you know, the past customers can buy your next product as well. Um, all of these things can, can work in a synergistic way as a brand, even though I don't like the word synergy. Uh, I don't know mm -hmm. if I was uh, smacked around the 80s uh, too many times with that term, but uh, it's just one that I, I don't dig. But it, it aptly describes this idea that your products should work together as a brand, ideally. doesn't mean you start like that. If you just found three hot sellers and you started turning over cash and then you revert it into a, a brand concept, I'm fine with that. Really, I'm fine with whatever works for you. But I just know, and I think John generally seems to agree, that if you build a brand, your exit and your wealth building opportunities are larger than they are on just a pure transactional business. Fair to say, John? 100%. And I think to that point, whenever you're starting an Amazon business, you really need to think through that purchase for whatever product you have. It should be the first of, a, of the start of a relationship with that customer. So whatever you can to build that relationship off of Amazon, you know, get them to your website, um, start that relationship building with them, so you can sell them other products or additional pieces to the product you've got. You know, that at, at whatever level you're doing that, even if it's just a couple of customers in the beginning, if you can constantly do that, you know, in a year's time, you're going to have a massive customer base of, of, of brand, you know, brand ambassadors who love your product. Um, and that's worth something that you can sell at some point. So, so treat your Amazon business to a degree as, as almost like a lead magnet where you're selling that first product, but, the idea is to start that relationship and get them get them off of Amazon to your website, your Shopify site, whatever that is, and, and build that 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 brand base. Um, and that is going to put you in a position where you can sell something one day and and scale your wealth really quickly. I, I love this because John is talking about equity, everybody. And I've repeated enough. You're probably sick of hearing it from me, but you know, you create equity by developing assets. Intellectual property is an asset, customer lists are an asset, chatbot lists are an asset. Uh, obviously you have to use them. This is uh, one little yeah. asterisk I like to put in for sellers. They're like, Hey, I got all these people on my list or all these people on my seller chat, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, cool. How often do you, you know, talk to them? How often do you reach out? Oh, well, I haven't done that yet. So you, that asset decays, right? So you have to build the asset. You got to nurture the asset and make sure that you take care of it just like you would anything else. Um, and so I, I really do appreciate that, that um, kind of, a bias that you have you're you're trying to help people build something that has value and that i have a, a great deal of respect for so uh let's as we close it up here we're running out of time here uh what would you say to somebody who is faced with this decision you know they need some sort of software they need some sort of help how would you position zanguru what's the pitch to them from zanguru look i think uh i think the pitch is just there's no pitch it's just try it for yourself and see see what you like or if you get value there and, and I'm, I'm pretty confident that you will get value from from the way that we approach data visualization and the way that we we collect data um you know we we have a team of really hot developers who who understand how to navigate amazon um and and get access to the data which is which is a little complicated in, in, a, in a lot of ways um and um you know provide it to our users so um you'll see when you look for whether you're researching new products, uh, the relevancy of the product idea that you'll see is just far beyond any other tool out there, even, even uh, you know, some of the so-called leaders around like Jungle Scout or anything else. So, um, you know, I, I would say just try it. And, and uh, an important piece that we really pride ourselves in is our customer support. It, it's, it's the highest rated in the industry. 
um, and, and the guys truly are passionate about helping you. Um, so, you know, uh, if, if you want a level of sophistication on your software, but also the support and guidance around it from people who truly are, are kind of got your back and want, want, to, want, to, want you to be successful, then, then Zonguru is probably um, a good one for you to try. Um, and, and in a lot of ways also, you know, uh, we're not as big as the biggest. Uh, we, we definitely have a good size, but, uh, but to a degree where a lot of uh, expert sellers will say, um, the best thing you can do is don't tell anyone about Songuru because uh, they see so many opportunities <laughs> uh, there that they don't really want other people to see it. So um, that's, that's, that's kind of like a, a frustrating point for me, but yeah, I, it's a great tip of the cap, but it's a bitter irony as well. Exactly. Yes? Yeah. 100%, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> listen, uh, so my uh, impression is that uh, there's some sort of deal happening over at Empowery and you guys have some sort of list uh, that talks about the hottest products. Can you talk about this list, this concept of uh, what you built there? And, and then we'll, I'll tell people how to get access here in a minute. Yeah, sure. I think, uh, you know, anybody listening who's, who's starting out and, and wants to understand how do you actually identify the right kind of private label brand product that you want to launch on Amazon and how to validate that idea? Um, we have a hot products list. Um, it's a guide really, which has got the latest 60 hot products on there. But more importantly, we really go through uh, the process of how we interpret the data to validate the ideas and teach you what is the right way to approach finding and validating a product that you can then use with our tools. But the guide is, you know, standalone is, is, is a fantastic piece to have to just really get you thinking in the right way for your Amazon journey. So that's available free. You can, you can just go to the link that you guys have and, and, uh, and grab that um, and, uh, and look, check that out and, and uh, go from there. Yeah. I think it's a, an important thing. You know, I do believe that uh, despite this opportunity and it is real, it is substantial. The, one of the biggest kind of mistakes you can make is picking the wrong product to, to start with and then just kind of betting the farm on it and you know putting all your eggs in that basket forever especially if you made a, a poor choice so having uh, additional knowledge and understanding of uh, how to you know analyze products and consider opportunities I think is very important and then obviously sourcing it and my understanding is you guys have something uh, something to do with sourcing as well uh, at least mm. as a tool am I right can you just uh, give me the one minute version of that yeah, it's, it's called Easy Source. Get it? <laughs> and, and it makes sourcing difficult? Is that, I'm reading into it a bit. No, carry on. Yeah. Uh, it's actually, a, it's, it's, a, it's a world's first product in collaboration with Alibaba.com. Uh, you know, Alibaba.com realized probably earlier than last year, but, but really put into action a, a plan to, to help uh, provide, connect the right manufacturers with private label sellers on Amazon.com. And it's a very specific type of manufacturer you're looking for. Um, and they were looking for a, a partnership or a partner, a software company to partner with them to, to help bring that to market. And uh, they pitched it out to many software companies and, and we ended up winning that um, because I think fundamentally they, they understood our, our, our belief in, in creating proper sustainable brands, which at the end of the day is what, is what we want to be able to do. It helps everyone, right? So um, we partner with them and, and you can access Zonguru and as, as you search for products, uh, it'll link you through um, and, and help you validate manufacturers and, and connect you to them. So uh, it's a great tool um, and, and you know, it just cuts time down massively because you have the right information to make the decision, but also it's the, the cream of the cream. You know? so, um, uh, that's yeah, really that's good. A, that's, that's something that's unique. And, and as far as I know, I've never seen anybody else who has anything like that. So uh, no, again, a, a nice little feather in the cap. Uh, John, let me ask you, and I'll just prepare you, uh, any, any uh, words of wisdom that you want to leave out there for the awesomers? This is something that, you know, if, if they were driving down the street, that they would uh, reflect on and go, boy, that, that John, he's a smart guy. So no pressure, go. <laughs> um, I think, you know, maybe in the theme of, of what we're talking about in terms of starting and building your business, I think the, the, one of the biggest things for me that, that was truly helpful was, was setting a milestone you know, which is an important thing to do. So envision what your business is going to be like in a year's time, where you want to be, particularly the, the amount of money you want to be earning from Amazon. Cause I, I've, I've done this with many people and the number you put down is the number you're going to hit. Um, it's just a, it's just a universe thing that's going to happen, but you have to visualize what that is and set that milestone. But what's really important and, and the most important step is to break that down into minor stones. Um, and, and so I have this, this phrase called minor stones, which is if you can work backwards from that milestone and simply 
put in place certain milestones and work that all the way back to just the one thing you need to do this week and just focus on that and don't think about anything else until you've done the one thing and then move to the next thing and then the next thing. Um, that is ultimately how you, you kind of get rid of that overwhelm, you get rid of that overthinking and you have a, a, a very specific plan with something you have to do just this week, the one thing, and then move on to the next and, and you'll get that Amazon business live in no time, no matter what your life is like, you know, kids, other work opportunities, whatever that is, you'll, you'll get it done. So, um, you know, overall, I think that's my piece of advice is, is, is set a milestone and break that down into minor stones and you'll get there. Boy, that John's a smart guy, everybody. Uh, I think that was very well done, especially on the spot. And I quite agree that, you know, uh, kind of engineering to the end result that you want requires actually knowing the result you want, kind of writing it down and then uh, working your way backwards. That's how I try to do all of the things. I didn't know that, by the way, going in. I had to learn that lesson. It took me a long time, by the way, uh, you know, more than a decade for sure before I had any idea what I uh, should be trying to achieve. Um, and the point is whether it's selling the business, whether it's launching a product, all of these, you have some result that you're looking for. Figure out that, so that result and then work it backwards and, and try to stay out of that uh, mushroom cloud because it ain't, it ain't fun, that's for sure. Um, everybody, if you go to awesomers.com uh, slash 191, we're going to have this episode up there. We're going to have a couple show notes. And we're going to put that link that John talked about in there as well. Make sure that you have access to the, the hot products that their uh, software has surfaced and give you a chance to kind of get in there and, and get a look around. And uh, I think you guys even have a free trial or something as a result of uh, some of these things. Am I right about that? Yeah, they can get in. There'll be a free trial. But, uh, you know, just get that hot products list and, and uh, everything else will, will be there for you. So um, start with that. It's nice. I, I appreciate the time, John. Uh, and you're down in L.A. now, did you say? Yeah, in Los Angeles, another sunny day over here, and uh, and all good. Yeah. All right. Well, first, uh, how dare you? I'm in Seattle. It's another rainy day here, uh, but uh, that's enough weather talk, everybody. If you have listened to this and enjoyed it, again, feel free to leave a five star review, um, and I'm quite open to you leaving a five star review if you hated it as well. I don't really care. Just leave a five star review, um, and don't forget to share and and so forth because that's. That's what I like to see, and uh, I ain't afraid to beg. I ain't too proud to beg. Um, that's uh, all for us, everybody. Thanks again, John, and we'll see you awesomers next time. Yeah.